been working on. Uh, yeah, so uh, we'll let him explain what he's been working on. You have a mic on your head, right? Good. Brad. Uh, and uh, okay, cool. So uh, without further ado, our major graphics card driver developer and whatever else he does, uh, and all around good guy. Uh, Hans, how do you say it again? Hans. Hans is good. Hans is good. Okay. Yeah. Hans is good. <laughs> Thanks. I thought what I'd do is I'd go through basically what I've done since I'm in winter last year. So that would be some yeah. stuff I walked through Nova, the Raiden HD driver, the Raiden RX that Trevor said something about, and this hardware project that's been lying in the middle of it. So first thing, key improvements to walk through Nova, we now have rendered to texture, which is great, so you can Rend it to a texture and then use it to render something out else. Uh, added to that, we've got depth textures, which you can see there. That's that sub image there. That's the depth texture. Um, black is closer. White is far away. Uh, you can use that for things like soft shadow casting and depth of field, which the Ami Boy on Twitter X guys have done. So I'm not sure how clear it is on the screen. This stuff is in focus, that, this, this is the depth of field working. This stuff is in focus, that stuff <coughs> off in the distance is slightly blurred as you'd expect in a camera. This is stuff we can now do smoothly. Um, next big one is the bitmap as texture, which allows you to do image processing and do things like use the screen to render stuff in 3D. Now, I didn't think much of this demo when I wrote it. I just needed something to demonstrate bitmap as texture. I thought, okay, I'll take my texture cube and wrap the screen around it, and then shift it off to PD testers. It wasn't until other people said, hey, this is really cool, that I thought, oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> I said, it's, for me, it was like, I know I can do it. It didn't take me that long. Whatever. Yeah. Until other people said, yeah, this is cool. So there have been other things, I mean I've got a whole bunch of new shader instructions that now work, loops, functions, integer operations, bitwise and all of that. There's a, a, red, a smart register allocator in there now, which means we can have bigger shaders, because up until that point I was taking advantage of the fact that these GPUs have like 200 registers. So you can stick a lot of stuff in there without having to reuse any of them. But it's, it's reusing registers that are no longer used now, so you can have bigger shaders in there. Surprisingly, this is the first time on Omega OS we've had hardware accelerated flat shading. Warp 3D actually <coughs> simulates it by cutting it up into individual triangles. So this is now, there's no slowdown at all to using flat shading. Uh, also, polygon offset, polygon mode, don't really need to dot those out. The developers want them, so I put them in. And of course, various bug fixes as people tell me about things that are not quite working right. Moving on to Raiden HD. So the V2 driver has two changes over the last year. First one is being able to use ultra high def 4K screens, uh, HDMI screens that is. And the other one is supporting the OLAN GPUs, which are the low-end Southern Island series. So, like the R7 240. Moving on to V3. So the big change in V3 is that you can use all of VRAM, not just the 256 mix. So the graphics library can use the first 256 mix. Walk 3D, Walk 3D Nova, and all related software can use the rest without requiring developers to recompile their code. It's just automatic. So this is one of the ways I was testing it. I used Jedi Academy, changed the texture detail to very high, the highest setting, which is pointless, really. But um, And then just watched, this is a little internal tool I wrote. Uh, someone else got a much nicer one. And you can see at this point, it's using more 270 megs. 280, it keeps rising, 
at this point, with the V2 driver, things would be slowing down because it's swapping stuff in and out of the graphics RAM. And here it's going, no problems using 578 <coughs> megs of video RAM in total. Uh, perfectly as smooth as if it was using smaller textures. So it's, it's nice to get in there. It uh, just means that game developers have more breathing space and give you more detail, more, more graphics. So the next one is the Radeon RX driver, which um, will allow us to again use cards that have been released over the last year. So these are the Polaris series. Goals are to get both 2D and 3D working. And I'm also, this time around, I'm trying to use as much of AMD's code as I can with minimal changes. The, the goal is to be able to keep up with their relentless releasing of new series uh, with less effort. So we'll see how that goes. That's the secondary goal, to be able to stay up to date faster. Current status, I have a skeleton driver. It doesn't open the screen yet, but it does detect graphics card, initialize it, find out what outputs it has, and it can get the EPID info from the monitor so it knows what monitor is connected. Next stage will be to actually get the monitor to show something, and then get the 2D acceleration working, and the back end for the 3D drivers. And of course, Wolf Reading Nova needs an update because the instruction set on Polaris is different from the Southern Islands. But fortunately, they're similar. So that's the current state of that. So now, on to this hardware project. Um, people who, a number of you have already seen it, but for those who haven't and those who are watching online, um, this is it at home. So you've got some batteries. If you look, you've got no cables going into an outlet. It's the table or A1222, keyboard, screen, some circuit boards, and it's one of switching it on. Take a bit of time to switch on. And yeah, basically this is a battery powered Mega OS 4 machine. So, yeah, there you go. You've got the system running on battery power. And because it's a Southern Islands card in there, you've got full 3D acceleration and everything going in there. So that's the... Well, 3D no longer than setting up. So moving on, my goal is to build a kit that you can put together, um, put that A1222 motherboard in, put in a graphics card that works with it, or if you've got a uh, an X86 ITX, any ITX motherboard you want, you can do that as well. Batteries. Designed it to be removable so you can replace them. My con configuration, I've stuck in batteries that give me roughly 93 watt hours. <coughs> so that's just shy of the 100 watt hour max that the airlines currently allow you to. Because I would like to be able to just put that in the bag, take it with me to the next show, uh, and present the next the next time I present it in the Mega Show to be using my own laptop to do that. So obviously I've got the electronic parts working. I have a little bit of CAD work done, like the case around the, the holder there, that's 3D printed. Still have to work on the case. So it's still very much a work in progress. If you are interested, if you want to keep track of it, go to that URL and sign up to the mailing list, and I'll keep you on the list. I'll keep you up there. And that's basically a quick summary of last year for me. So if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Yeah? 
the, uh, so since this is going to be like a do-it-yourself laptop, is there some type of riser card that's going to be able to take the video card and put it on a slant? So yes, I have, a, I have a 90 degree riser card, um, which I have made a simple CAD model of, so I can design the holder. So it will lie flat. It's going to be a fat laptop, obviously, because it's fitting a full yeah. height mini ITX laptop, uh, sorry, board in it. Um, but not that fat. So the card will be horizontal. Yeah. How long does it run? How's the battery? Right now, uh, I have never sat there. Can you repeat the question? Oh, yeah. How long? The question was how long does it run on batteries? So I haven't sat down and actually measured it. Um, I have measured how much power it takes. I've tried running multiple things like the Walt 3D Nova demo, run videos at the same time to uh, bog down the system. At that point, it runs uses about 28 watts. So with 93 watt hours, I think you can get three hour theoretically three hours at life like that. And that's with no dynamic power management. So there's room for improvement there too. Yeah. I'm very curious of your graphics development. Can you describe the hardware software workflow or the setup that you use to do that? Okay. Well, so the question is what's my workflow uh, for graphics development? So, my current one, I've actually changed it now. Uh, I'm a bit more efficient. I have a SAM 460 with the Polaris card in there. And I do my write code on my Xbox 1000 <coughs> using Cobench. I compile it, and then Ubrid's got this little feature that not many people know about, where you can load the kickstart via TFTP. So I use it. So I compile my code, it gets copied to a kickstart folder for the SAM 460, and then on the SAM 460, I pull that in by TFTP, and I can test if it works. So that's my current workflow. Is there any more detail you wanted on that, or? Uh, well, you had mentioned that you initialize the card but you can't see anything, so I was curious how you would detect that type of stuff. Um, that's, so the, that's all debug output. Right now, I, I output to a serial port, the, the, the kernel debug, uh, de debug printf statement. So that's outputting information about what the driver's doing. I have a debug version of the driver with all this additional information. So that way I can see, okay, the Atom BIOS uh, interpreters run and it's completed successfully. It's detected these outputs. Yes, it's got two HDMI and one display port. It's exactly what I'm expecting. Um, and then now the, the latest, uh, last step I had was yes, it's managed to pull the uh, EDID info from the card. How long does it take to Oh, I've never met it. I've, yeah, the question, so the question is, what's the build time? I have never really measured it. So you have, do you have to get up and get a cup of coffee? No, I don't get up and get, I don't get up and get a cup of coffee. Um, and, yeah, usually, I think if you do a complete recompile, it can't take more than a few minutes. Um, at this point, uh, obviously, as it grows. Is there actually a debugger, or is all your debugging through a second? Sorry? Is there actually a debugger, or is it all through print statements? So, is there actually a debugger, or is it? Well, it's all print statements. It's all print statements. I feel sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean that's one of the challenge with, challenges with graphics driver de um, development is that you're running the graphics card, right? So you can't use an in-place debugger either way. Um, maybe a remote debugger might work, but quite often, if you crash the GPU. The debugger that lets you step through your code on the CPU is no use anyway. Right? Well, and, and quite often, the only feedback you get is the GPU has crashed and it says it might have a, a status in a debug register saying this thing's hung or this thing's still active. Uh, so you don't get that much feedback. Have you any thoughts about um, support for generalized compute like OpenCL? So, do I have thoughts about OpenCL? My thought right now is um, I just want to focus on graphics right now. I have had a quick look at it, like the B standard, the, the bytecode that 
Walk 3D Nova reads in to compile to, to native um, the GPU assembly. That has a whole bunch of extra instructions that you need to support before you can do compute operations. So I know it's a lot more work. And then someone, as in someone not me, needs to write the OpenCL library that if I get into that. So it's something I would like. So from the internet, uh, anyone that have the old Radeon HD uh, 5,000, 6,000 Warp 3D drivers? Any way to have the Warp 3D for the older cards? Um, my simple answer is someone needs to dare to drive, write a driver. So I'm too busy with the existing series and, and keeping up with the latest developments to say I can go back and do the older generations as well. Like, I, I just have to be pragmatic about that. There's only so much I can do. But if there's someone else who says, hey, I want to, and, and I have been contacted once or twice by people who thought about it, um, but if there's someone who says, hey, I want to give it, give it a shot at writing an evergreen driver for the 5000 and 6000 series, I'd be happy to help them out, tell them what they need to know, where, where to find the documentation and everything like that. So yeah, it's, it's, it's up to someone deciding to go on ahead and do it. And, and I'd just like to add to that, it is possible even if you've never written a graphics driver before, because when I got started all those years ago, I hadn't written the driver before. So you, you can figure this stuff out. Anything else? What's some, I'm not familiar with the RX series of cards, um, 400, 500. So are they basically that much faster than the current R9 series, for example, that you can still readily buy? Is it that big of a jump, or what's the... So you're asking what's, what's special about the RX series? Yeah. Um, What's special is that they're new and you can buy them readily. Okay. Um, again, the low-end low -end RX series are, can be a Southern Island GPU, or, or one of the other older ones. The mid-range to the high-end ones tend to be the, the newer series. They're not necessarily faster. They might have newer features like, I don't know, um, the Southern Islands introduced that you could do ultra-high def with HDMI monitors. The Evergreen series couldn't do that. So they've got improvements like that. But it doesn't mean that just because you're buying an RX series means that you're going to have a faster car. Right. Well, in fact, I can guarantee if you buy the low end of any series, it will be slower than the mid range to the high, high end cards from the previous series. Yeah, that's what it seems like. So I'm, I guess I'm yeah. trying to get in my head that it seems like some of these newer cards are not that much faster at, at all than, no. than what the current ones are. And there's a reason why someone, because someone who's only using their computer for email or word processing doesn't need a high-end card. And the cards that were made several years ago were more than fast enough for them. So it makes sense to have a low-cost, low-speed version of every new series they make. And also have the, the mid-range and the high-end ones for people who need something more, especially the gamers. So the 500 be their higher series then? The, the, uh, the RX 500 is just a newer series than the 400. So again, you've, in the 500 series, you've got low-end cards, mid-range, and high-end. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And all three of those will be supported in the RX driver? Yes, all three. Uh, all, of the seri all, all of the Polaris cards will be supported. Um, again, because they have a tendency to use older cards for the really low end, um, I can't guarantee that every single card in the RX 400 and RX 500 series will be supported. Uh, but the Polaris ones will. So another question from the internet. For your uh, DIY laptop kit, yes. are you going to partner with uh, the Amiga retailers to provide a full ready-to-go all the parts and pieces, or are people going to have to sell uh, the parts themselves? So, quick answer is, I Aon is going to be working with me, and we I haven't thought that far through as to you know how. I think the way I want to do it is to have a kit with 
everything except the motherboard and the graphics card. And then you put whatever motherboard graphics card within the power limits of the system, of course, uh, because you're running on batteries. So you don't want to stick a high end graphics card in there. I can see Trevor busted it out on his first flight and like, <laughs> like wires everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Runs <laughs> <laughs> for 20 minutes. <laughs> Just to point out your choice of motherboards, that would be table or table. <laughs> or a table. Yeah. For an hour is four. For an hour is four. Right now, it's only the table. Yes. Is the screen going to be Although, have, uh, have people seen that Amy ITX yeah. thing? If it's, yeah. a, if it's following the ITX standard, that should fit. Well, the heights, though. That's the thing, the, the heights. Uh, so was, but that's part of the I, mini ITX standard as well, is the heights. Yeah, but there's, there's mini ITX and there's Amiga. <laughs> mini ITX is mini ITX. Also, it's actually fine. It's just standard. Yeah. But the mini ITX, the mini ITX standard has a... Um, Limitation how high the components can go as well. You can always saw the Zorro card down a little bit to size shape it up. Someone can come up with a 90 degree riser for the Zorro card and mount it horizontally. Yeah. So, anything else? Was the screen got to be hinged like a typical laptop would be, or is it Will it be hinged? I, I want it to be like a laptop on a hinge. Okay. Yeah. Um, me and other people have suggested a likeable PC, which is not another option, way to bypass that, but I still like flipping over the laptop. Yeah. So that, that's my goal. That's, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. what I'm hoping to do. So anything else? Uh, okay, that's it. Thanks.